So this week we are excited to be exploring Dublin and we're planning to spend an entire week here. This video is going to highlight 25 things to do around the city. Dublin is where most trips in Ireland begin, so before seeing the rest of the country, Audrey and I spent a whole week getting to know the capital. When the weather cooperated, we walked around the city, toured Trinity College and visited the Botanical Gardens. And when it poured rain, as it often does in this part of the world, we just popped into a pub for some Irish stew and a pint of Guinness. The following video will show you a few of the different things to do in Dublin, Ireland. Enjoy! So today we are back on university grounds, thankfully not as students. We are just visiting Trinity College, Dublin. But the real name of it, listen to this, it's College of the Holy and Undivided Trinity of Queen Elizabeth near Dublin. Quite the mouthful, right? So we've signed up to take a tour. We're going to be visiting the grounds, the library, and also setting eyes on the Book of Kells. Trinity College was founded in 1592 and it is the oldest university in Ireland. The campus is open to visitors interested in touring the grounds and you'll also get to hear some fascinating stories of famous students including the likes of Oscar Wilde, Jonathan Swift and Bram Stoker. We came all the way out to Phoenix Park on the west end of Dublin because we were told that you can see wild deer here and we were lucky enough to spot one! So we're like quietly tiptoeing towards it and we were able to see it and it was so cool. I've been really enjoying this park. It's a great place to get outside the city centre and it is massive. We've only explored a mere fraction of it. Easily one of the most popular attractions here in Dublin is the Guinness Storehouse and I've had a friend who's visited here and told me about the experience and it, it really is basically just like an experience. You go in and it's almost like a museum. You have all these different interactive rooms, just interactive multimedia and at the very top there's a bar where you get a complimentary pint and you have really good panoramic views of the city. The Guinness Storehouse is Dublin's most popular attraction and it's a must visit for beer lovers. The storehouse covers seven floors surrounding a glass atrium shaped like a pint of Guinness. Inside you'll find a copy of the 9,000 year lease signed by Arthur Guinness on the brewery site. They won't be going anywhere for a while. Grafton Street is one of the main shopping areas in Dublin. You're likely to find lots of musicians, buskers and performers along here. Plus you get a good vantage point of the spire. This afternoon we are doing a battle of the drinks. We are ordering two different spiked coffees. Sam is getting the Irish coffee and I'm getting the Bailey's coffee. And we're going to see which one's the tastiest. Okay, so what's in your Irish whiskey? Tell us. Alright, so if you take a look over here, you'll notice that there's cream on the top. Mm -hmm. And then this is normal coffee, which has been enhanced with sugar. And the secret ingredient here is Jameson whiskey. Oh yeah! That must be good because oh. you're chugging it. So good. I mean, I got a big gulp of cream because it is the first uh, sip. But I also really taste a lot of the whiskey. And of course, there's a really strong coffee flavor. And the sugar, it's just, oh, it's like, it's basically like having a dessert. So I got a bit of a more feminine drink instead of whiskey. This one has Bailey's cream liqueur. So let's try it. Ooh. You can definitely still taste the alcohol in that. Mm. Yeah, this is nice. It's really sweet. Like Sam said about his, it's almost like a dessert in a cup. And it's really nice on a cold day. So I'm just gonna keep sipping. So I guess it's time for me to try yours. I have a feeling I'm not going to like it as much because I'm not a huge whiskey fan. But here we go. Good cream on your lips. I like mine better for sure. Mine is sweeter. This one is a lot stronger. It's got a kick to it. 
and I feel like if I drank this whole thing, I would be tumbling by the time I walked out. <laughs> so Bailey's for the win? Bailey's for the win. So we're here visiting the Botanical Gardens, which is a great green escape. And what we're really loving about it is because it's slightly outside of the city center, there's hardly anyone, and it's also a free attraction. The National Botanic Gardens are located a few kilometers north of the city center, and you'll find it's a very tranquil place. The gardens were founded in 1795, and today they hold over 20,000 living plants. Prior to the establishment of the Glasnevin Cemetery, Irish Catholics had no place of their own to bury their dead. This burial ground gave both Irish Catholics and Protestants a place where they could give their dead dignified burial, and it has since become the resting place for people of all religions and non-religions. Experience Gaelic Games is a place where you can come and try traditional Irish sports like hurling and Gaelic football. It's a fun and unique way to take part in an integral part of Irish culture, and they have programs that cater to groups or independent travelers looking to join a team for the day. So you can't visit Oscar Wilde's former home because it's being used by the American College Dublin, but you can come to the park right across the street and see him here for yourself. Number one Marion Square is the former home of Oscar Wilde, and if you walk over to the park right across the street, you'll be able to see a statue of Wilde himself. I'm visiting Jameson Distillery and what's cool about this place is that you can go inside and there's tours of the distillery There's also a really cool gift shop. There's a bar. There's a restaurant So there's a lot to do for just about anyone who's interested in learning about whiskey Old Jameson Distillery is the original site where Jameson Irish whiskey was distilled until 1971 It is now a visitor center that offers both guided tours and whiskey tastings in Dublin and it is lunchtime so we've tracked down the oldest pub in the whole country. We are here at the Brazen Head which apparently dates back to 1198. That's like what 900 years or so that this place has been around? But I mean obviously not the whole structure is authentic. It's probably just a few bricks and stones. But anyways, it is the oldest in the country and we're here for lunch. So you've gone for something a little bit more hearty. Yeah, like this burger is enormous. Check it out. It's one of the biggest looking burgers I've had in a while. La -la. And these fries, like these are the thickest cut fries. Like look, they're actually thicker than my fingers. I hope you're planning to share. <laughs> I don't know about that. What kind of makes it unique, you know, aside from it being the oldest pub in all of Ireland, of course, is that there's all these different kinds of rooms. You can eat outside, you can eat inside of the bar, there's a second level up top, and so we checked out most of it. So Sam is exploring his Viking roots. Well, my roots, I am a Viking. Nice outfit. Writing my name in a foreign alphabet. So that's E. Oh, a Viking toilet and someone's gassy. So we are now inside a Viking home, and this is how people would have lived and stayed warm. Got a little kitchen slash stove happening here. Instead, the smoke went out. St. Patrick's was founded in 1191, and it was built in honor of Ireland's patron saint. The cathedral is open to visitors for a small fee. So it's museum time, my favorite time, and Sam is tagging along. So this is the National Museum of Ireland, and we're going to go in and check it out. Temple Bar is an area known for its lively nightlife. Located on the south bank of the River Liffey, you'll find all sorts of pubs playing live music once the sun goes down. There's also one pub in Temple Bar called the Temple Bar, but don't let that confuse you. <laughs> so what are we up to tonight? Out for some beer! We're going for some beer, we're going for a pint, and this is Audrey's sister Ashley and Hello. friend Raquel. 
We're gonna go out for a pint. Let's see what the nightlife is like in Dublin. Here's to friends and family in Dublin. Cheers! I'm really excited about lunch today. I'm trying something for the first time called Irish stew. And that consists of mutton, potatoes, and onions. And it's considered to be sort of a peasant type of meal. But considering how cold it is outside, it's been like hovering around the 15 degree mark. And it's been raining a lot. This is the perfect kind of food to help warm us up. So like Sam was saying, the main ingredients in an Irish stew are usually mutton, potatoes, and onions. But you can get a little bit fancy with the recipe and start adding different vegetables. So what I have here actually has carrots, celery, and a few different herbs and spices. So I can't wait to try that. I'm really hungry. Mm, oh my gosh, that's really nice. Like, it's actually really cold outside, it's been raining all day, so it's really nice to be inside, sitting in a pub, enjoying my stew. Irish Whiskey Museum covers the story of Irish whiskey through the ages. You can take a guided tour or go straight to their bar for a little whiskey sampling like we did. I've been waiting for it. Time to try my Irish whiskey. That's nice. Does it burn on the way down? I better believe it does. Does it warm you up? Yes. Ooh. St. Stephen's Green is a large park located in Dublin city centre. If the weather cooperates, it's a nice place for a picnic. St. Auden's Gate is a 13th century gate that sits on one of the remaining stretches of the city wall. This would have been once the entrance into the medieval city and we ended up befriending a puppy! Dublin Castle has played many roles over its history, ranging from a defensive fortification for the Norman city of Dublin to the setting of presidential inaugurations in modern day Dublin. It is also open for tours to visitors. The Irish Museum of Modern Art is housed in the Royal Hospital Kilmainham, which dates back to the 17th century. Its collection focuses on modern and contemporary art. Kilmainham Jail is a former prison where many figures involved in the struggle for Irish independence were held. If you're in the mood for a scenic walk, we recommend walking along the length of the River Liffey until you reach the Grand Canal. We are currently visiting St. Michael's Tower. There would have been a huge bell all the way up there, and it would have told to announce Mass, funerals, special events, but also if there was a really bad storm and people needed to start praying for their neighbors and anyone who was out at sea. So we have come to the end of our time in Dublin. Tell us, what did you think of the city? I actually loved it here. I'm really glad that we gave ourselves eight days to properly explore the city. It allowed us to, to travel around nice and slow and to delve deep. What I really loved about Dublin is that it's one of the most walkable cities I've ever visited in Europe. We almost did all of our sightseeing on foot and that's just fantastic. I really enjoyed the pub culture here, drinking Guinness. The people were really friendly, especially at our local pub in Glasnevin. So my one tip for saving money in Dublin is to get a leap card. It'll help you save money on the bus compared to if you're buying individual fares with cash. So what did you think of Dublin? Well, I have to be honest, I didn't fall in love with the city right away, but it's definitely the kind of place that grows on you over time. And getting to spend eight days here, we really got to experience a bit more of the culture and enjoy the pubs and just visit museums and get to know the city a little bit deeper than just what you see on the surface. So we actually had a really great time here and would highly recommend it. And that's a wrap for our time in Dublin. 
We hope you enjoyed this video and that it gave you a few ideas of what the city has to offer. As always, if you have any other suggestions of fun things to do in Dublin as a visitor, feel free to share them in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels! Well, hello from Northern Ireland. This week we are traveling around Belfast and we only have three days in the capital, so we're going to try and cover as much ground as we possibly can and show you some of the highlights. Belfast is the capital city and largest city in Northern Ireland. This destination hasn't always been popular with visitors due to a conflict known as the Troubles. However, in recent years, Belfast has experienced a resurgence and is slowly starting to make a name for itself. We gave ourselves a few days to explore the city and the result is the following video showcasing 20 things to do in Belfast. The RMS Titanic was the largest ship afloat at the time it entered service and it was built by the Harland & Wolfe shipyard in Belfast. The Titanic Belfast exhibition tells the story of the Titanic's ill-fated maiden voyage in 1912 and it is one of the top attractions in the city. Right now we're on board the SS Nomadic, the little sister of the Titanic, and we're going to take a full tour of the ship. The SS Nomadic was a steamship built as a tender to the RMS Titanic. It was her job to ferry passengers, baggage and supplies to and from the shore. Why don't you go place an order over there with your virtual server? Sure thing. Two champagne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you can play dress up aboard the SS Nomadic and maybe, perhaps this is what women would have worn back in the day. Would you care to join me for a cocktail tonight? Oh my! I'm gonna say yes! You look absolutely ravishing, darling! Why, thank you, thank you! Next up, we are heading inside St. George's Market, which we've been told is more than just a farmer's market. Apparently, aside from buying food there, you can catch some live shows, go shopping for vintage items, jewelry. So we're going to head inside and see what it's like. And it's only open on the weekends. So, since we've been in Ireland, my favorite meal has been breakfast, and it's been this full Irish breakfast. We're now in Belfast, and over here it's called an Ulster Fry. It's slightly different from an Irish breakfast, which we'll explain later, but it's a very complete breakfast that has a lot of different things, including bacon, sausage, eggs, potatoes, tomatoes, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which we'll show you in a bit. So it is time for a grand tour of the meal. <laughs> breakfast has arrived. Yep, sure. So we've got soda and potato bread over here. Mm -hmm. We've got our fried egg. Yeah. We've got something that resembles a hash brown. Mm -hmm. We've got our sausage. Yes. Our and bacon and of course our beans. So that's a very complete meal. I hope yeah. you're hungry. Yeah, we sure are. Okay. So what I find really unique about the Ulster fry is that you get potato bread and soda bread, which are breads that I've never really tried before. But they're quite nice and compact, very heavy, you know, you're getting your carbs in early in the morning. It looks quite thin, but it's really heavy. It's starchy. And then, this is a soda bread. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to put butter and jam on it, since it's more of a savory bread, but it's really good on its own. Thank you. And I think they call them rashers here. Yeah, they are called rashers. Sam eating rashers. How are they? Something that I love about the Ulster Fry and Irish breakfast is that you can pick it up almost any time of day. We typically have it for breakfast, but if you get a craving for it at night, you can pop into a restaurant that specializes in the dish and you can have yourself some. So are you feeling like a student again this morning? <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not a student anymore, but I am enjoying visiting Queen's University here in Belfast. It has a lovely campus. And what's cool for us is that we have a connection to Queen's because we went to a university in Canada also called Queen's. But I think there's no affiliation between the two. Just well, the same name. Yeah, that's it. Queen's University Belfast is one of the oldest universities in the United Kingdom. It also happens to have a really nice campus, so we decided to take a little stroll. 
The Botanic Gardens first opened as a private garden in 1828, and for many years the public only had access on Sundays. Today anyone can visit and it's a beautiful place to walk around, especially if you luck out with sunshine. So it's a beautiful afternoon here in Belfast and today we are going to be visiting Belfast Castle. Now up until today I had never heard of Belfast Castle before, but I got chatting with the taxi driver and he really recommended this place. So here we are and we're going to go check it out. I made friends with a forest creature. Oh, so cute. Belfast Castle sits on the slopes of Cave Hill Country Park and it offers nice panoramic views of the city. Visiting may or may not make you feel like royalty for the day. So another cool thing you can do at Belfast Castle is eat a meal here. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're heading downstairs to the cellar restaurant. I'm hungry! This is my first meal inside a castle and I'm having a clam chowder. So how was your first meal in a castle? <laughs> well, it's really good. That's some of the best risotto I've had in a long time. And I must say that the price was really affordable and it was just a great meal. Well, after that glorious feast, it's time to burn off some calories. We are gonna go all the way up to Cave Hill and we've got a bit of a hike. Okay, so we had every intention of reaching the top of Cave Hill. But honestly, the path isn't clearly marked and we only have about an hour before the sun sets and we've hit a point where this trail splits into five different little paths and we don't really know which way to go. So we figure better turn back around now before it gets any darker. However, if you do start the hike a little earlier in the day and maybe if you have a better map than what we have on hand, you should try it because we've been told the views are great once you reach the top. There you go. It is hockey night in Northern Ireland. We are here in Belfast to watch the Giants play. I'm a huge hockey fan and coming from Canada, this is a real treat. This is my first hockey game in Europe. Let's go check it out. in Belfast and we are trying a traditional Irish and Northern Irish dish. This is called boxty and it's basically made with grated potato that's mixed with mashed potatoes and then fried in a pan. So Sam and I have ordered two different varieties and we're going to be digging into those because they just arrived and we're so hungry. So there's a little rhyme that goes along with boxty and it's a little something like this. Boxty on the griddle, boxty on the pan. If you can make boxty, you can get a man. I don't know how to make boxty, but I somehow landed Sam, so... <laughs> I must have low standards, huh? <laughs> so I got boxty with ham, cheese, and an egg, a fried egg on top. So let's have a taste of this. So steaming. Mmm. Oh, pop up. Mmm. You silly goose. It tastes like fried mashed potato. All right, and what do you have over here? So mine is the pulled pork with an applesauce. Apple chutney. What do you think? Mmm. So good. I love that. I love any kind of potato dish that's fried. And then you add some pulled pork to that. Yum! So if I had to compare this dish to anything from back home in North America, I would say it's kind of similar to a hash brown, except it's a lot thicker and the potato's a bit softer. But I mean, it's still fried, mashed and grated potatoes. So it's good. Heavy on the carbs, pretty tasty. I like that it comes with different toppings. And I could honestly eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, so it works any time of day. Mm -hmm. While in town, we made time to visit the Ulster Museum. 
They have a really good exhibit focusing on the Troubles where you can learn more about Northern Ireland's turmoiled past. While wandering around the city, you'll also notice large murals with strong political messages. Some of these make reference to the city's turbulent past, while others allude to a peaceful future. These murals offer a unique window into the city, and you can even take black taxi tours that cover the history and show you the peace lines and some of the troubled spots. Belfast City Hall is located in Donegal Square, in the heart of the city centre. They offer free daily tours to the public. The Octopus's Garden is a fun vintage store in Belfast City Centre. They have old tapes and records, as well as unique pieces for anyone wanting to spice up their wardrobe. Take a look at my pint over here, you might be thinking I'm having Guinness. It does look a lot like Guinness, but in fact it is Belfast Black, and I have to say it tastes just as good, if not better. For 360 degree views of Belfast, we recommend going to Victoria Square Shopping Centre and riding the elevator up to the dome. This will give you a nice bird's eye view of Belfast. St. Anne's Cathedral, also known as Belfast Cathedral, has stood over 100 years. It's another attraction worth visiting if you're in the area. For a different dining experience, you can set foot aboard Holohands at the Barge, which is moored beside the Waterfront Theatre. It's a top-rated restaurant in Belfast, plus it's pretty cool dining aboard a ship. Lastly, if you're in the mood to catch a performance while you're in Belfast, you can choose between Ulster Hall or the Grand Opera House, both of which have pretty active event schedules. So to wrap things up here in Belfast, I'm going to mention three things I really liked about the city. First off, it's highly affordable. One of the best bargains you can get is a day pass for the bus. It's really cheap and it allows you to travel anywhere in the city, unlimited usage. Secondly, this is a very friendly city. Almost any time we brought out a map, we had a local coming up to offer help. And we just found that whenever we took taxi rides or in restaurants, locals really went the extra distance to make us feel welcome here. And lastly, this is a very walkable city. Most of the attractions are clustered in the downtown area and you can reach most of them by foot. And that's it for our quick trip to Belfast. As you can probably see, our visit was fairly short so we didn't get to do it all. If you have any suggestions of other sites and attractions worth checking out around Belfast, feel free to share those in the comments below. Good morning everyone! Bright and early here in Dublin, I'm about to board a train bound for Killarney, a city I've never visited before. Audrey's off on a friends and family road trip, so unfortunately they'll have to be putting up with me the whole time. Anyways, let's get going. It's nice, only one transfer today. The journey's been really pleasant so far, it's been really scenic, and I should be in Killarney in about an hour. After arriving at Killarney Station minus my sweater, I dropped off my bags at the hotel and set off on foot to explore the downtown core. I quickly found myself impressed by how passionate the city is about its Gaelic football with green and gold displayed everywhere. With no shortage of restaurants and pubs at my disposal, it wasn't long before I sat down for lunch. For lunch, I'm going with fish and chips and a pint of Guinness. Never gets old. hit the spot. Now it's time to go out and check out the town. Well, it didn't take me long to escape the bustle of the downtown city core. And so far my first impressions of this place have been really positive. It's a nice change of pace from Dublin where, you know, it's a really big city and it's really hectic. So over here it's much, much smaller. And literally it took me two minutes to walk out into the woods here and now I'm down a path, just what I want.
years I've made it to the entrance of Killarney National Park, but before I go there, there is a cathedral right in front of me that looks absolutely amazing, so I'm going to go check that out first, and then onwards to the park. An interesting fact is that St. Mary's Cathedral served as a shelter and hospital for the sick and dying during the Great Famine before it was even fully completed in 1855. Here's I have options galore in terms of where to go. Well, Ross Castle it is. And after that gigantic lunch, I've got a lot of calories to burn off. Something you really appreciate in Ireland is when you have a gorgeous day like this, when it's sunny outside, when there's hardly a cloud in the sky, because it does rain a lot here. And so any excuse to put away your umbrella and get outside and go for a walk, definitely worth taking advantage of. You know how sometimes in life you hit a fork in the road? Well, apparently sometimes you also hit a flood in the road. So this road is flooded here. I'm probably less than 500 meters away from the castle. I can't see it right now, but here is the dilemma. How do I get there? That appears about as far as I can go. Unless, of course, I can magically find a pair of rain boots or a canoe. My second effort is about to be rewarded. I'm not making it all the way to the castle, but it appears that I'll be able to get a view from it from across this lake slash pond. Where there is a will, there is a way. It appears this third time may be the charm. And I have a feeling that I'm getting close to the castle because I've just got into town. I've taken the third path over. And if I'm right, that means I'll actually be able to visit it. Open to the public, Ross Castle, built in the 15th century, is situated on the edge of Killarney's Lower Lake. Visiting its grounds is the perfect ending to a walk in Killarney National Park. In terms of nearby attractions, it was definitely my favourite. Often find when traveling you have these unexpected days. You have these days where you lose your sweater and you try to reach somewhere and it doesn't work the first time or the second time and maybe not even the third time. Luckily it did for me the third time. But anyways, this is a kind of adventure that, that really makes traveling interesting for me. I like that, that days are varied and that you never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to finish off this adventure with a river walk back to the hotel. Good morning from Northern Ireland and today is a road trip day. We're actually leaving Belfast behind and we're going to be driving the Causeway Coastal Route and exploring the coast, visiting some of the major attractions along there. One of them is Giant's Causeway and from there we'll see what else we find. I know there's a distillery, maybe visit yeah. some parks. Sounds awesome and we've been waiting to do this for a really long time. For us, this is what the real road trip in Ireland looks like. So let's hit the road. So the weather has been quite unpredictable. We had blue skies when we left Belfast less than an hour ago. And up ahead we are seeing some grey storm clouds. So we'll see what happens when we actually reach the coast. Hopefully we won't be needing umbrellas or rain ponchos. This is Ireland. You gotta dress for all occasions. Oh yeah. So it's almost lunchtime and we've been taking a lot of detours so we still haven't reached Giant's Causeway but we've reached a little town called Ballycastle so we're going to stop here and have some lunch. Cozy by the fireplace are we? Yeah just warming up by the fire with a pint of Guinness. Couldn't be any more relaxed. So our food has arrived. I have a tomato basil soup. And I have a feeling Sam. someone is going to have food envy. I think I am. Look at that. That giant fish and chips. Are you gonna share? No. What? <laughs> You're not gonna share with wifey? Probably not. <gasps> Something I'm gonna really miss from Ireland are these chips that are bigger than my fingers. Oh, giant chips. Mm. Oh, no. 
I need to try at least one of those. Super. Mm. Well, it's nice and savory with lots of spices and a little drizzle of olive oil on top. It's top notch. All right, so we finished lunch. We've made it back in the car, and that means our road trip continues. We're on the way to Giants Causeway. Yeah, I keep calling it the wrong thing. What did I call it for? Like Causeway, Causeway of Bay. Giants or <laughs> Giants Causeway. That's where we're off to, and hopefully on the way back to Belfast, we'll have time to hit up a whiskey distillery. Ooh. So it's going to be a pretty epic day. All right, let's go. So we have just arrived at Giant's Causeway, one of the wonders of Northern Ireland, and we're just going to be following the trail all around until we reach these massive pillars that look out of this world. Let's go. Giant's Causeway is a region of roughly 40,000 interlocking basalt columns as a result of an ancient volcanic eruption. Located along the northeast coast of Northern Ireland, this National Nature Reserve has been named the fourth greatest natural wonder in the United Kingdom and is easily one of the most popular attractions in the country. Legend has it the columns are the remains of a causeway built by an Irish giant challenged to a scrap by a Scottish giant. it so far it's been fantastic we're going the extra distance to get a really nice vantage point and you know what it's never crowded along the extra mile lead us that extra mile across the sea you'll find identical basalt columns at Fingal's cave on the Scottish Isle of Staffa many of the structures having been subject to several million years of weathering resemble objects such as camel's hump giants boot structures shepherd steps and the organ to name just a few. And this is where the path officially ends. Unfortunately, they've had to put up a barrier because of erosion. And if you look off in the distance, there is a massive rock slide and you wouldn't want to be walking there. Probably not. Big day has arrived. It's Kerry versus Dublin. I've got my ticket. Now it's time to check out the game. Viva Mexico! Thanks very much. For the longest time, I've been very indecisive as towards who to cheer for, but I finally made a decision. I'm going for the underdog, Kerry. Let's do it. First up was the minor championship. Guess what? Kerry won. It was now time for the main event, Kerry vs Dublin. The final itself was incredible. The rapid action and skill of the players was evident. It's easy to see why Gaelic football is the most popular sport in Ireland. I only wish the weather cooperated as it was raining for most of the game. Both teams put in a solid effort. But in the end, it was Dublin who won the championship. 
I finally found a quiet spot here on the train bound for Belfast and I still can't believe what I experienced at that stadium. 82,000 plus crazy fans all going nuts over a game and I have to admit I still don't know a lot about Gaelic football but it's something that's definitely piqued my interest and I hope I have an opportunity to experience another game in the future. I'm here in Dublin, Ireland to check out Gaelic games. I know very little about them so this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to learn a lot. I absolutely know it. Hurling reminded me of lacrosse, except it's even faster. My hockey and baseball skills came in handy when it was time for me to give it a go. To be a good goalkeeper, I say, if I had told anyone younger, it takes a lot of confidence and like, it's one of these things, if something goes wrong, you forget about it. If you let a bike go, then you forget about it. And you have to be very verbal to the lads, like say, someone mark him, someone go over here, someone take that shot. And the last thing I'd say is pretty much just practice. Practice, like I, I nearly come down here every day, just even touching your hurl and your ball, just getting used to it. And then like your, your reactions comes into play, like as I'm getting older, I'm finding that my reactions and reading the ball is getting a lot better. So that that's pretty much the main points I'd say to anyone. Okay, and last but certainly not least, it's time to learn some Gaelic football. I was especially keen on learning as much as I possibly could about Gaelic football, considering I had a big match to attend the following day. I'm Murphy and I play for Nafina GAA. My main sport is hurling and I used to play a bit of Gaelic football too. The great thing about football is it's a mix of all sorts of sports, rugby, soccer, uh, basketball, all mixed into one. So it's like yeah. high scoring and... Oh definitely, like we could be, you could have maybe three, four, five goals a game and then you might have 30, 40 points. So it's a high scoring game, wow. you're always on your toes. It's, that's awesome it's, and it's a contact sport as well. Oh yeah, too. that's a great thing, Like, so you have to be Bulky, bulky, always in the gym, lifting weights, whatever, so. <laughs> as well as playing, you look good as well, so, ah, it's good. All right, that training session was awesome. I'm a bit sweaty. Time to go back for a shower and get ready for the big game tomorrow. So today we're up in Belfast, and we are trying a traditional Irish and Northern Irish dish. This is called box tea and it's basically made with grated potato that's mixed with mashed potatoes and then fried in a pan. So Sam and I have ordered two different varieties and we're gonna be digging into those because they just arrived and we're so hungry. So I got box tea with ham, cheese, and an egg, a fried egg on top. So let's have a taste of this. You silly goose. It tastes like fried mashed potato. So, if I had to compare this dish to anything from back home in North America, I would say it's kind of similar to a hash brown, except it's a lot thicker and the potato is a bit softer. But I mean, it's still fried, mashed, and grated potatoes. So it's good. Heavy on the carbs, pretty tasty. I like that it comes with different toppings. And I could honestly eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So it works any time of day. Mm -hmm. All right, and what do you have over here? So mine is the pulled pork with an applesauce. Apple chutney. What do you think? Mm, it's so good. I love that. I love any kind of potato dish that's fried. And then you add some pulled pork to that. Yum! Magic. So there's a little rhyme that goes along with box tea, and it's a little something like this. Box tea on the griddle, box tea on the pan. If you can make box tea, you can get a man. I don't know how to make box tea, but I somehow landed Sam, so... <laughs> I must have low standards, huh? <laughs> It's 
take a look at my pint over here, you might be thinking I'm having Guinness. It does look a lot like Guinness, but in fact it is Belfast Black, and I have to say it tastes just as good, if not better. What do we have for dessert? Well, well, we couldn't resist getting a Bailey's coffee. I think they called it the creme, the cafe. Mm. I think I got mostly cream in that sip. You got a whipped cream mustache over there. Another one. Oh, oh, I keep burning myself today. <laughs> mm. One more sip. You're taking all the cream. You're a cream thief. Cream thief. Okay, your turn. I'll share. So what's your dessert? And what we've got down here is the Irish whiskey chocolate truffle. Ooh, that, uh... The question is, does it taste like whiskey? A bit. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so decadent. That's like... That's as thick of a piece of pie you're ever gonna have. It does look decadent. One more shot because it's just so beautiful. Look at that. Look at that cake. Alright guys, sticky toffee pudding with ice cream. <gasps> ice cream. Because we're epic pigs. No. Mmm. Mm, that's nice. Did you get used to that? Did you get used to that? Mm. It's a nice fluffy warm cake and I think it's fresh out of the oven. things up we ate a lot of food but we're just gonna focus on the price of the boxy which was six pounds each pretty decent value unless you convert it into Canadian dollars but other than that uh, it's, it was a really good pub meal and I highly recommend it when you're in Ireland or in Northern Ireland try your box tea. This afternoon we are doing a battle of the drinks. We are ordering two different spiked coffees. Sam is getting the Irish coffee and I'm getting the Bailey's coffee. And we're going to see which one's the tastiest. I wanted to do an Irish coffee taste test video, but of course didn't know where to go. While walking around the streets of Dublin, we found a place that said, this has got the best Irish coffee in the city. So we're looking forward to trying it and seeing if it is the best. What's in your Irish whiskey? Tell us. All right, so if you take a look over here, you'll notice that there's cream on the top. Mm -hmm. And then this is normal coffee, which has been enhanced with sugar. And the secret ingredient here is Jameson whiskey. Oh yeah. Time to take a sip. That must be good because oh. you're chugging it. So good. I mean, I got a big gulp of cream because it is the first uh, sip, but I also really taste a lot of the whiskey. And of course, there's a really strong coffee flavor and the sugar, it's just, oh, it's like, it's basically like having a dessert. So I got a bit of a more feminine drink instead of whiskey. This one has Bailey's cream liqueur. So let's try it. Ooh. You can definitely still taste the alcohol in that. Mm. Yeah, this is nice. It's really sweet. Like Sam said about this, it's almost like a dessert in a cup. And it's really nice on a cold day. So I'm just gonna keep sipping. So basically it's the same as an Irish coffee, the only difference being that there's Bailey's instead of the Jameson whiskey. Yeah. Switching drinks here for a second. The girly drink, the Baileys. That's really good. I actually prefer Baileys to whiskey, so I'm gonna say that the Baileys wins out over the Irish coffee. So I guess it's time for me to try yours. I have a feeling I'm not going to like it as much because I'm not a huge whiskey fan. But here we go. The cream on your lips. I like mine better for sure. Mine is sweeter. This one is a lot stronger. It's got a kick to it. And I feel like if I drank this whole thing, I would be tumbling by the time I walked out. <laughs> so Bailey's for the win? Bailey's for the win. So you enjoyed those? Yeah, I think we're all done here. 
So in terms of price point, you're looking at about 4.95 euro per drink. That's how much we paid over here. And I think what really makes an Irish coffee taste good is there's two main components. The first is that they don't skimp out on the whiskey or the Baileys, that they put in you know, a generous amount of that. And the other thing has to do with the quality of the coffee. And both were excellent here, so I can give this place a, a really good score. I'm really excited about lunch today. I'm trying something for the first time called Irish stew. And that consists of mutton, potatoes, and onions. And it's considered to be sort of a peasant type of meal. But considering how cold it is outside, it's been like hovering around the 15 degree mark. And it's been raining a lot. This is the perfect kind of food to help warm us up. The main ingredients in an Irish stew are usually mutton, potatoes, and onions, but you can get a little bit fancy with the recipe and start adding different vegetables. So what I have here actually has carrots, celery, and a few different herbs and spices. So I can't wait to try that. I'm really hungry. That's really nice. Like, it's actually really cold outside. It's been raining all day, so it's really nice to be inside, sitting in a pub, enjoying my stew. Wearing your new sweater. Mm. Grab some meat over there. Yeah, it's just the kind of meal I'm craving on this type of day. So we've already talked a bit about the ingredients that you find in an Irish stew. And something that's really cool is that sometimes they add Guinness to it. So what else can you tell us about stew? Well, I've actually almost finished my plate, so it is delicious. Also, the meat was very soft and tender, so I imagine it's been boiled and then simmered for a couple of hours. And yeah, it's just a really great dish. If you find yourself in Ireland, try it out. So give us a price point for Irish stew. So at the place we're eating here, we picked it up for 9 euro at a lunch special. But keep in mind, this is the city centre of Dublin, and I'm guessing in the countryside it's considerably cheaper. From Ireland, we are here in Dublin and it is lunchtime, so we've tracked down the oldest pub in the whole country. We are here at the Brazen Head, which apparently dates back to 1198. That's like, what, 900 years or so that this place has been around? But I mean, obviously not the whole structure is authentic, it's probably just a few bricks and stones. But anyways, it is the oldest in the country and we're here for lunch. So Sam's having his Guinness and I'm going for a nice pot of tea. Got to stay warm in the city. Teetotaler. Ow, that burns! Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. That is Careful hot. over there. Careful. I've seriously been waiting for this for a long time. Of course I've tried Guinness before, but this is my first pint of Guinness in Ireland. And I'm ecstatic because it's basically my favorite beer in the whole world. Ooh. An extra special beer today. So fresh, so tasty. You know what? I could I could drink this literally as a meal. Is that good? So it's a cold day here in Dublin, so I've gone for a cream of vegetable, which isn't a very typical Irish dish, but I think it's gonna keep me warm. <laughs> So you've gone for something a little bit more hearty. Yeah, like this burger is enormous. Check it out. It's one of the biggest looking burgers I've had in a while. Ooh, la, la. And these fries, like these are the thickest cut fries. Like look, they're actually thicker than my fingers. I hope you're planning to share. <laughs> I don't know about that. Time to try one of these bad boys. <laughs> yeah, they're done really nicely, really crispy on the inside and mushy in the middle, like that. I'm ready to devour that monster burger of yours. Alright, this, this thing is so massive, I'm barely able to hold it here. 
Mm. Wow. Can you chew and describe it at the same time? Oh, such a big bite. <laughs> so I got a bit of everything in that bite. Bacon, the meat, the vegetables, the lettuce, patty. That's a really good burger. It's thick, It's the meat is juicy, and the cheese is fresh and delicious. Let's have a little bit of a travel update. What are we going to be doing over the next Home. few weeks? So, over the next two weeks, at first we're going to be spending one week in Dublin, just checking out the city, visiting some of the main attractions, eating lots of Irish food and seeing what that's all about. And then our second week in Ireland, we're actually parting ways. Sam and I will be doing our own thing. I'm doing a girls road trip with my two sisters. <laughs> you sound really happy friends. about that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but yeah, I'm doing a girls road trip for a whole week and my sisters and two of my friends are flying over from Canada so it's just going to be the five of us that'll be lots of fun no boys allowed and I guess Sam you're going to be hanging out here watching football all by right? my lonesome huh mm-hmm that's the plan so it's not all doom and gloom over here even though I'm by myself I'm planning a trip up to Kerry and I'm going to come back to Dublin I'm going to watch some Gaelic football I don't know a lot about the sport but they're having a real there's a huge event happening and I want to take it in What kind of makes it unique, you know, aside from it being the oldest pub in all of Ireland, of course, is that there's all these different kinds of rooms. You can eat outside, you can eat inside of the bar, there's a second level up top, and so we checked out most of it. Breakfast time in Belfast. <laughs> So, since we've been in Ireland, my favorite meal has been breakfast, and it's been this full Irish breakfast. We're now in Belfast, and over here it's called an Ulster Fry. It's slightly different from an Irish breakfast, which we'll explain later, but it's a very complete breakfast that has a lot of different things, including bacon, sausage, eggs, potatoes, tomatoes, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which we'll show you in a bit. grand tour of the meal. <laughs> Breakfast has arrived. Yep, sure. So we've got soda and potato bread over here. Mm -hmm. We've got our fried egg. Yep. We've got something that resembles a hash brown. Mm -hmm. We've got our sausage, yes. our and bacon, and of course our beans. So that's a very complete meal. I hope yeah. you're hungry. Yeah, we are. So what I find really unique about the Ulster Fry is that you get potato bread and soda bread, which are breads that I've never really tried before. But they're quite nice and compact, very heavy, you know, you're getting your carbs in early in the morning. It looks quite thin, but it's really heavy. It's starchy. And then, this is a soda bread. I'm not really sure if you're supposed to put butter and jam on it, since it's more of a savory bread, but it's really good on its own. Thank you. So my favorite part is the sausage, and what I like to do is dip it in with the beans. And I think they call them rashers here. Yeah, they are called rashers. Sam, so eating rashers. How are they? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something that I love about the Ulster Fry and Irish breakfast is that you can pick it up almost any time of day. We typically have it for breakfast, but if you get a craving for it at night, pop into a restaurant that specializes in the dish and you can have yourself some. And to wrap things up, how about the price point? Okay, so we got this breakfast in downtown Belfast and paid £4.50, which I think is pretty decent. And I imagine if you get it out in the suburbs, it might be a little bit cheaper, because this does look like a really popular place. 